It's the unhappy hour. Broadcasting to you live from the Milky Way galaxy, the solar system, planet Earth, North America, the United States of America, California, Los Angeles. To be specific, hello everybody and welcome to the unhappy hour. And it is an unhappy hour right now as the Cleveland Cavaliers drop game three in Chicago on a last second buzzer beating bank shot, eyes closed, just ma- miracle shot by Derrick Rose. Are the Cavs in trouble? I'll tell you what, we're going to bring an NBA consultant, former NBA scout, and lifelong Cleveland sports fan Zach Barris to the program to discuss what we saw yesterday and, of course, you know, how the rest of the series are shaping up with another win by the Clippers yesterday, how this whole landscape is shaking out in the John Wall injury, what have you. We'll get to that in a moment. I want you to go online and check out our recent show. We uh, interviewed journalist Ford Fisher. He was detained in Baltimore uh, as a journalist, uh, you got to check out the video. It's uh, pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting. You got to be careful because if uh, you don't let the journalists do their job, you know, as long as they're staying out of the way of an official police investigation, and they have video with Ford, he he wasn't getting up in their business, but he was right there getting it on camera, and they didn't like that, so he was. Uh, detain. Check out the video. Check out the show. We're going to post that. That's from our Agree to Disagree program. You can check that out at the newamericanmedia.com. <clears throat> also, on the TNAM radio link at the newamericanmedia.com, that's where you can click play to listen live. When do we go live? Well, we, we let you know. We'll send it out on Twitter and Facebook like we just did now, which means we're live. So go to the newamericanmedia.com. On the right-hand side, click TNAM radio, click play, listen live. Underneath that is our Twitter feed and our Facebook feed. So uh, on Facebook, do a search for The New American Media with spaces in between and like our page. And like us on Twitter, we're at American underscore media underscore. You can do that right off of our homepage. And finally, thenewamericanmedia.com has a site over on YouTube. So go to youtube.com slash thenewamericanmedia and subscribe. Uh, We're coming up on half a million video views. A lot of archived content to sift through, sports and politics and a lot of stuff in between, radio shows and interviews. Check it out. There's a lot of fun stuff over there. So without further ado, what I think we need to do is bring in Zach Barris to the program. Uh, Pretty tough, pretty tough loss yesterday, got to say. Pretty tough. What does it really mean? Well, that's the hope, at least. Hey, Brian, how you doing? I'm living the dream. How are you, sir? I'm good. Enjoying some 90-degree weather. 90 degree. I'll tell you what, man. It's been gloomy over here in Los Angeles, let me tell you. Yeah, I'm coming in tomorrow. Well, I'm going to be in San Diego tomorrow. So. Yeah, you're always in the wrong spot. Come back to L.A. We, let's go go to a Clipper game I, or something. I wish, man. I wish. <clears throat> I know, I know, I know. Well, we'll get to that later. I mean, because we'll, we do do want to talk about the Clippers and their win being up 2-1. Um, but, of course, we got to start with Derrick Rose. Uh, just eyes closed, cross the fingers, bank shot to win the, the game. The shot you can make. And, like I said, even if LeBron would have made that, I would have still called that a lucky shot. It was a lucky shot. Um, Over six foot you know, here's, seven, here's, Tristan Thompson. There's some positive things to take out of that loss, so let's start with that. Though, once again, LeBron and Kyrie shot a combined 24 percent last night and lost on a lucky buzzer beater. This sort of thing, the Cavaliers, even without Kevin Love, are still a far superior basketball team than the Chicago Bulls. Kyrie and LeBron played like absolute crap last night, and the team was still in the game. That's what I'm trying to get at. They are going to be just fine. I fully expect them to come out and do what they did in game two and winning game four. Okay, so you expect, and I do too. I think that we, I mean, how many, how many uh, layups were we missing? LeBron was missing them. The tip backs. Exactly, exactly my point. You know, the dumb turnovers. Crappy game. They played a crappy game, and they barely lost that game. That's what I'm trying to get at here. It was, you know, it was a tough loss because the one they should have won. But like I said, I'm not going to sit here and hit the panic button yet. What What do you make of uh, Iman's groin? How do, How much of a contributing factor? He you think played this... and he was damn good last night. I'm not going to. I don't think it was a contributing factor at all. Okay, so I what... think he was fine. If he wasn't fine, he wouldn't have been in the game, and he wouldn't have been playing at a high level. 
I mean, he's been fantastic through the first three games of the series. Yeah, I mean, him. Jr. was fantastic last night too. Both of them were. I mean, this is why I think they're going to be okay because, they, like I said, last night you saw LeBron and Kyrie. It seemed to be they were about twenty percent, like they played terrible. If you get them even at fifty to eighty percent, you're going to blow them away. You're going to do what you did to them in game two. You know, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm really not. I'm not going to sit here and panic. It just, it just isn't worth it. And I was so angry last night after they lost, I couldn't bear myself to watch the Clippers game. I know you're so burned out on basketball. Bring to watch it. Yeah, it, it, I, it's. I, it gets hard when, especially when it's close and it ends that way. You're like, oh come on, man! We had them right where we wanted—a one-point game in the fourth quarter. This was supposed to go to overtime, and we were going to beat them by nine. You know, like what happened? And of course, a lucky shot. You know, and, and a talented, skillful, uh, amazing shot. If you want to look at it that way, with Derrick Rose, what, what do you make of Della Vadova? He he's he's playing he's a, a significant role. He's been fantastic this series. Fantastic. And frankly, at the end of last night's game, I kept calling. I was like, oh, my God. I kept calling it. And I was like, put in Del Vidova and take out Kyrie. Like, I don't get it. Yeah. Like, Kyrie's been awful at that point. Yeah, I know it's a confidence issue. But Del Vidova had been playing so, so well for the first three games. He should have been in there in the late part of the first quarter. So normally, I love that lineup. When you've got Kyrie, you've got Smith, Shump, LeBron, and Tristan playing small, they killed the Bulls with that lineup. And they're going to stick to that and play that a lot. Because you're, you're killing with athleticism, speed, and they have the ability to kick the ball around. It's almost like you didn't lose Kevin Love when you're playing with that lineup. You have four guys in that lineup that can consistently shoot the three, you know, and make their shots. And I'm talking about Kyrie can, Shump can, Jr. can, and LeBron. And then you've got Thompson, who seems if they do miss the shot, he's going to wind up with an offensive rebound 50% of the time. <laughs> it does so, kind of seem that way. It seems like the Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen with – uh, Dennis Rodman down there. You know, they'll shoot as much as they want, but they're getting extra possessions. It's like, oh, man, we just held Jordan to miss that shot. Now they get another one. you got to be kidding me. Um, but, he's but... earned every penny <clears throat> of what his next contract will be. And I'm telling you, he's, gonna, he's in line for some big money. Now, he, here's the thing with Thompson. I mean, it's a weird scenario. Would he be a good fit on a team like the New York Knicks? Absolutely not for four years, 58 million or four years, 52. It's a terrible fit. He's not one of those guys who's, who's worth max money on a, on a bad basketball team trying to make them good. He's one of those guys who's so valuable to an elite team because he's like, you know, he's just that piece. You know, he's such a good rebounder. He's such a great offensive rebounder, one of the best we've seen in years. I mean, he's so valuable to the cast. So he's going to get every penny. He really is. Yeah, I think so too, and and I was just shocked by this. When did Tristan turn into such a beast? I'm trying to remember when the transition I think, actually I think happened. I have to do with training with LeBron, getting LeBron there, LeBron guiding him. Really, realize Tristan, I think, has realized he doesn't need to score to be valuable. Right. You know, Although they love that alley you play. 15. Yeah, and that's the thing is he's, he's taking high percentage shots. They love that 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 pick and roll, do a little twist alley oop. I've seen that with Tristan. A, it works every time. Three, four times now game. in the past couple games. It's same it's same a, with Mozgov. It works. Well, okay. Here's a question about Mozgov. Do you think that they're that they are using him accurately? I just I just feel like he should have a few I design think, plays as, as as to no. Other... I think they are, but I think what happened last night they were leaving him open, so let him take open jump shots. He usually makes those. Um, so I think they were just going to keep letting him shoot. And unfortunately, he just didn't make them last night. You know, um, you know, everybody has bad nights. I mean, like I said, we've seen out of LeBron twice this series. And like I said, as long as the Cavaliers, and you know, you know, playoff LeBron does not play like this consistently. So that's why I'm not too worried. You know, you never see it in back-to-back games from LeBron with him playing like this. Um, you know, he'll come out fired up tomorrow night. He'll get the, you know, he'll get this team fired up tomorrow night. I'm telling you, I'm not, you know, and hopefully my plane is delayed by 20 minutes so I can, you know, just so I can watch the end of it. Oh, uh, you're you're gonna get shut out. It's gonna be that close for you. That's terrible. Well, well, my flights my flights in the afternoon, like just towards the end of the game. So, so I should be able. To, I've got the game time app on my phone, so I can always watch it on my phone. And there's direct TV on the plane tomorrow, so I'm not, you know, like I said, too worried. All right, yeah, it's but but as they as we move forward, and I expect that the Cavs are going to bounce back and have a strong game four. Uh, didn't they ask LeBron, you know, about it, and he said, "Hey, I expect us to bounce back in game four, just like we did in game two. You know, yeah, I, we're, they were. we're taking it. Yeah, I I, th- I think that that's going to happen too. But how concerned do we need to be about Kyrie's foot? What do we know about uh, what's what's tweaking? I don't him and, I don't know anything. I really don't. Hmm. We got to get some information on that because it's. You know the fact that is he. He said he was kind of like a decoy out there. 
you know? And that's, Yeah, I mean, you could, I mean, like I said, I think they'll be fine. At that point, they'll put Del Vadova in if it's needed. Yeah, well, I mean, already missing Kevin Love to see him uh, wincing out there. And it was visible. He was in pain out there. Um, it was not the same Kyrie that we're used to. Um, I don't know. I mean, should the Cavs be worried at this point? You're saying no, but t- t- tell me about the legitimate reasons why the Cavs should be worried. Play devil's advocate if you can. I, you already said, we'll get this. Okay, that's that side. Pl- flip, flip the script. Why should the Cavs fans be worried right now if, if you had to get in that mindset? I mean, you're down two to one. Yeah. It's it's the one it's the one piece of information in between that and an elimination game, and that's when you're really up against the wall. Not that LeBron hasn't come back from those before, but it's obviously not the way you want it to go, which is why you're supposed to defend home court. And that stinker the Cavs put up was so damaging. But in that case, in the Cavs' first loss, they, it was a similar situation. It took all the Bulls had, and they barely got through when everything on our team went wrong that night, and that was a positive takeaway from it. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I, so are you expecting another blowout tomorrow? Let me ask you that. Do you expect a, a last-second shot, or do you think that the Cavs are going to at least have a 10-point cushion or something? Um, I, I think – I don't know. I really don't. I don't think it's going to come down to a last-second shot. Yeah, I mean, it could. It's just how many of those does LeBron miss, like, right underneath the – the hoop. It's I don't know. Two different plays, and the Cavs win that game regardless of that last second three pointer. So, um, yeah. all right. All right. A- any other final thoughts? Any any thoughts on how Coach Blatt is working the rotations and in how he's coaching in the playoffs? Any thoughts there? I think he's doing fine. I mean, like you said, the players just don't execute. Not all on the coach. Yeah, and and speaking of not on the coach, Tom Thibodeau. Geez, he's you know the hot seat couldn't get much hotter. Um, do, do you th- do you think if things go the wrong way and Tibbs is gone, that the next team that gets him is going to be getting a good coach, maybe in the best situation possible with a fresh start? Um. Yeah. I mean, I really don't know what's going to happen. Who they're going to hire? I don't know who their target is right now. But you know, there's the odds. Though I mean, here's look at look at the odds right now. What I'm just saying, the winner of this series will probably wind up winning the East. I'd be shocked if they don't. Yeah. It'd be very hard for Chicago to fire Thibodeau after making the championship. It would. It hinges on this series. It's very big for a lot of reasons. Um, well, oh, it's something that, that, that recently came up. I, I didn't get your thoughts on this yet. What do you make of Cardale Jones and Joakim Noah? What do you make of this thing, this Twitter feud? I mean, I mean, Cardale would kick his ass. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. He would smash him. <laughs> he would smash him. But I, I don't know. I, just, I think it's absolutely hilarious. If you guys aren't familiar... Cardale Jones, obviously the third-string quarterback from the Buckeyes that won the title uh, this past season, and and he's getting into it. They, apparently Noah yelled up, you don't play in the SEC or something like that. And my reply is like, yeah, they beat the SEC. Um, but Joakim and, and Cardale Jones are going back and forth in this feud. And I, I like the one graphic where it's like the boxer's tail, you know, tail of the tape, how tall, you know, what's your age, what's your weight. It's It's, I don't know, it's pretty funny to me. But... Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I mean, that guy really is just an absolute clown, and he gets under people's skin, and he got a a technical out of LeBron James yesterday. I mean, that's what he does, but um, I don't know. I guess it's just one of those detail points to keep your eye on on the soap opera of this stuff. But let's let's bounce around real quick, Zach. Uh, What do you you make of the Clippers series? Obviously, you didn't win the game, but or you didn't watch the game, rather, but what do you make of the fact that the Clips are up 2-1 over the Rockets, who some had coming out of the West? They're playing great basketball. I mean, I'll tell you that. From what I've seen so far, and Austin Rivers has been fantastic, too. Yeah. I, I mean, go figure. If, if your dad sticks his neck out, <laughs> you know, goes out on a limb to kind of bring you on and gives you a shot and you come through, like, hey, that's is that good coaching? Is that good playing? I mean, is that just luck or um, is that a package deal? You know, and that's, that's kind of fun to watch. Um, I, I guess I would say in the West, if I'm pulling for somebody – and I guess I'm – I don't know. I'm not. I w- – w- I don't know. I don't even know. I would just say that I'm probably pulling for the Clippers. Um, maybe it's because I already saw the Cavs play the Clippers and we beat them. Um, and Golden State has the best record in the league. But wh- what do you make of Golden State and Memphis right now? Have, w- have you seen anything surprising? Are you shocked they went down a game? Do you expect this to be tied up again or what? Um, I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't in that series. 
it just depends on my county, but Golden State should pull out that series. Yeah, I'm surprised that it's even. Maybe maybe I was surprised that the Bulls pulled off a game. I'm I'm equally surprised, if not more so, uh, that Memphis pulled off a game as well. Um, and we'll just keep our eyes peeled on. It's just interesting. The West seems wide open now um, without the Spurs there. Until the Spurs are gone, it, they always have a decent chance to make it. But they're gone. They're out. Like, that is not going to happen. Yeah. So um, it, give, it gives room for other players. And, and in the East here, Washington and Atlanta, Washington's up by about, uh, was that, 13 right now at halftime? It's unbelievable how bad Atlanta's been. It's probably going to be Washington coming out, won't it? Or do you think that the, the I would assume I think it's going to be Washington. Even with John Wall breaking his hand? Well, I mean, Atlanta sucks. They barely beat the Nets. That's true. In the playoffs, because I know the Cavs had their moments. But um, all right, so it's probably going to be Wizards versus whoever comes out of this game, and you're predicting a Cavs win in Game Four, as am I, and I'm okay with that. Um, do you happen to catch uh, Coach Urban Meyer? With the Yankees wearing a Yankees jersey. Did you see that one yesterday? It's not that big of a deal. Uh, Wouldn't blow it out of proportion. I know. It's not like that's the same sport. He's not going to go coach the Yankees, but I don't know. I wasn't a big fan of seeing it. Anyway, okay, that's what we got now. We, we, we've got an ultra-competitive competition, an ultra-competitive uh, series, rather, um, with the Bulls and the Cavs. We'll see how it turns out. Cavs' backs will be absolutely against the wall if Chicago wins. I expect the, the Cavs are going to come out. Do you have any other thoughts um, other than me saying that the Cavs are going to pull this win off? Do you have any other thoughts across the league and baseball? The, the, the Indians are sucking right now. Anything in like, Tom Brady? Did we talk about in deflate gate and whether he's, he should get suspended? I don't think we touched Honestly, on Honestly, I mean, it's, it's so stupid. They would have won either way. I mean, that's the most. That's I mean, but I guess it's whatever. <laughs> I, I I have a hard time caring about the Tom Brady story. I have a real hard time I do caring too. about it. I just it. don't care. <laughs> it's a non-issue. They won the Super Bowl. You know, they would have beaten the Colts either way. You know, there are disadvantages having to play well too. I just don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is cool though. I did run in. I saw. Uh, the other night I was on a run downtown. I was around West 6th Street. And I see Jim Brown outside of Prime XO, one of the steakhouses. And I'm like, why is Jim Brown standing outside with a couple other Browns personnel? Like, And all of a sudden I see this giant party bus pull up. I'm stopped at the corner waiting across the street. And out comes every single Browns rookie, you know, all dressed up nicely. And then there's Danny Shelton in a big brown Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> So I, I love that that culture. Cool. I love that that culture found a way to just get rid of the three piece suit. Like they're just like, uh, uh-uh, uh, this is our dressed up, and you're gonna respect it. And most people just respect it. That's so cool. They built in a new way of like uh, top notch fashion. I think it's rad. That Danny Shelton you know, seems like a character. I like. I'm him. sorry. I, I, you know, like I said, I don't know what the Browns are gonna do, but you know, at least he's a, he's a high character guy. So <laughs> it's just, it's you know what it's it's, it's cool to see it. You know, and you know. Getting ready to the Cavs, though, Kevin Love didn't travel with the team. I saw Kevin last night in the building. Uh, uh, he is definitely – he did not travel with the team. I knew that anyway, but uh, he was he was here in Cleveland. Right, do, now, seeing how you've worked as an NBA scout in certain conferences and bouncing around a lot, it, do, working with the team, does that – do you make anything of that if a player at recently after an injury? Because, you know, players no, are in a, a lot, lot of pain. No, a lot of times they don't want these guys traveling after an injury. You don't, um, you don't want to risk it. No, because the problem is, what, you're thinking, what if there's turbulence on the plane? What if something happens with the bus? You want him staying in, you want him recovering. There's no reason for him to be there on a road game right now when he just had surgery. But but on a home game, to come down into like an air quote safe part of the bench or to sit up in the owner's box or something. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's fine that he's there. He will be there at the home games. There's no doubt about that. Um, but with the road games, I don't think it makes that big of a deal. I mean, here's the thing. If they advance to the next series, yeah, he'll be there. And I think they will advance to the next series. Um, he seems to be doing pretty well. But, you know, part of me thinks he's going to be here next year, and part of me has that other sign-in trade for LaMarcus Aldridge. I don't know why I keep thinking more and more about it. But it's, it's one of these things. I just have that gut feeling and that gut, you know, usually my gut feeling is pretty right. And it's something I've been talking about for a while, about the LaMarcus Aldridge thing in Cleveland. And I don't know why, but just more and more I keep thinking it. 
either way, the Cavs aren't going to be left high and dry. I don't think, no. I don't think either way they're going to be left high and dry. So that's why I'm not worried about it. Because couldn't we sign him and then a sign and trade? Does that transfer the bird rights? How does that work? Is that it, it all depends on the Cavaliers' cap situation next year? So I don't know what exactly it's going to be like. You know, you'd trade Haywood first. Yeah, probably the guy has like seven minutes all year. He's my new next door neighbor. Oh, there you go. <laughs> he's a hell of a guy. Hell of a guy, I tell you. He's, he's a nice. He actually is a very nice guy. No, let's um, hope. Um, so, so but, that would get traded that contract, and yeah, then so, yeah, he, he yeah he'll be traded next year. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that has to go in there, but I, I mean, we'll see what happens. If Kevin Love wants to return home, you know, Lamarcus Aldridge has been non-committal to Portland over the last couple of months, and it seems and he and LeBron are very very he and LeBron seem to be very very close. It's something that you know I think the Cavaliers with Aldridge would be a dominant team. I don't even think it would be fair. I mean, he is he is really really good. But he is older, right? He's got a couple more years, a couple more miles. He is thirty. He is thirty. But at that point, it doesn't. You know, at that point, you get your ring, you get your ring. You know, the Cavaliers are going for one thing here. It's a ring. A singular that, ring you, would you, make you them the most that, successful. You get that? You that? You've ended fifty years of misery. That it? Yeah, I guess there is a little bit more of. You know, it's tempting to say, man, Andrew Wiggins here for you know if we could. Wiggins, keep him. I'm telling you right now, there's a great article that came up the other day. I forgot who wrote it. But it was specifically about Andrew Wiggins, um, you know, being his, his his real plus minus was the worst ever for a rookie of the year, the worst ever, which basically shows up and says, you know, when you look at it, that he's nothing more than a score, nothing more, which he could, you know, in a stat sheet suffer. You could be looking at him in a couple of years and going, wow, Wiggins puts up 26 a game, but he really doesn't contribute anything in the win department. That's if he didn't have LeBron James for a coach for a few years. Well, the thing is, LeBron would have—it wasn't going to happen with Wiggins here. That's what I'm trying to get at. LeBron didn't want him. He didn't want to sit there and play with a rookie. You know how frustrated he would have gotten with Wiggins. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You're probably right. You're probably right. It never happened. There's no reason to even speculate what if. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm hearing a lot more rumors about him coming to Los Angeles, and you know, of course, it makes for better radio when everybody's got to. Don't gotta... forget when you're listening to Max and Marcel, and you're listening to that trash and Jeff Ireland, who works for the Los Angeles Lakers, and you listen to ESPN radio there as I used to every day when I was in LA. You know, when I when I was first moved out there, and I was a 22 year old kid, and I'll never forget when I'm sitting there going on my runs and running in Kenya, I'm listening to them, and all they can talk about is how. You know how they, the Lakers are won't. You know the Lakers wouldn't be stupid enough to trade Pau Gasol to Minnesota to get Kevin Love and the second overall pick. You know it, it just makes for good talk radio. Or you get the guys calling in the show a couple of years ago going, "Okay, man, here's the trade. How about we give up like Bernard Fitz and like Lamar Odom and a couple of picks, then we get Kyrie Irving because he's going to come here anyway." Like <laughs> literally, that was all I heard. <laughs> <laughs> we like, gotta, turn on uh, ESPN radio, and those are the idiots that call in. <laughs> like, trust me. And, they, and these guys just feed them. <laughs> I mean, I have Homer disease as well. We've been laughed at. Uh, UFC is MMA laughed at us about um, how, how funny he thought it was. He's like, oh, yeah. I love how Zach's like, oh, if Kevin Love goes, we'll just get LaMarcus Aldridge. Like, it's that easy. And it's like, well, I mean, we are the number one destination with the deepest pockets. If, if we can I'm swing a sign and trade. A couple years, the Cavaliers were lined with LeBron and another superstar to add to Kyrie Irving. <clears throat> I was that confident because I knew, you know, like like I said, the Lakers last summer thought they were going to wind up with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love this summer. Yeah. They wound up with neither one of them. I mean, I mean, you know, and the Lakers, oh yeah, we'll be in the running for LeBron. LeBron will want to help Kobe get a six ring. What the hell is LeBron want to get Kobe a six ring? <laughs> not my circus, not my road, not my, what is you that? Know, not my circus, fans, not my monkeys. Laker fans are the most delusional fans on the planet. I can tell you that right now. Blazer fans? Laker fans. Oh, there you, you go. You, yeah. Laker fans, you can't even argue. They're a better team than you because they have 16 championships. As you always hear that. Is going, if you talk about how much the Lakers suck this year, all they'll do is say they can be 16, 16 titles, 16 titles. Yeah, and you know, 16 is fine. No, 16 is fine, but you, what you have is you have Apple Corporation who loses Steve Jobs, and you go, okay, I get where you've been and what you've innovated, but this is entirely new leadership now. 
what do you do with this new leadership? You know, with the whole bus saga over there, it's uh, it's it's hard Byron to make sense Scott of a long term plan. Coach? Byron Scott I mean, is the head coach. You drop fifty million dollars on a two year contract for a very aged and very broken down Kobe Bryant. You've kind of hand handcuffed your entire. You're stuck for several years now, as opposed to you know someone that wants to win. You look at the Spurs and you look at some of these other players. You know they'll take a little bit less money to keep great people around them. But you know it's Kobe's show out here. But he's all he's been injured for two years in a row. It is yeah, and Kobe's tricky. not the same player he once was. I mean, even with a healthy Kobe this year, they suck. It wouldn't have been a plant team either way. They would have won twenty something games with a healthy Kobe. Hey, you know what? When are we gonna when are we gonna do? Um, Either a combine show or a draft show. What do you think about that? Um, next couple of weeks, I'm traveling for the next nine days, starting tomorrow. So, um, you know, I'll have time at some point. All right, you um, let, but you let me know about true. that. Yeah, let let me know. Um, we'll we'll figure that out. Definitely, maybe not combine, but definitely draft. We got to kind of do a mock when it gets real close after the lottery's held. Um, when is that? That's coming up real soon, isn't it? Yeah, a couple. Yeah, very soon. It's 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 like some of the weeks. some of these events just creep up, and some feel like they'll never get here. Some years it feels like the NBA lottery or the the NFL lottery or draft rather. Uh, like I'm watching it for four months in slow motion, watching paint dry, and then other times it's like, oh shit, that's that's yesterday. Wow, I totally missed that. Um, you know, it just comes up real quick. So, any any final thoughts? Then, you, final thoughts. Let me let me summarize our conversation. Cavs have nothing to worry about. They're going to get Game Four and tie it up, heading back to Cleveland. Washington's in command without John Wall, uh, and then we're probably. It seems gonna... like it. I mean, either way, I don't view the Hawks as a threat anymore. I just don't to either the Bulls or the Cavs because they played so poor. Look how bad they've been against Brooklyn. They've been against a wash a wizard was a wizard team without John Wall. You know, the, the Wizards team without John Wall is not supposed to be beating the best team the supposed best team in the Eastern Conference. It's not supposed to happen. Yeah. You know, it's just I just don't understand how Atlanta's been so bad during the playoffs. It's terrible. I mean, really after the first two months of the year, they they, they were never as good as they were in the beginning. You know, they started so damn strong. They rode those they're coattails still the whole a good way. Basketball team. Oh I mean, yeah, they're, just, they're not bums. I think they're but... just worn. I think they're just worn out. I, I seriously think that's it. And that's what I'm hoping to see out of LeBron is that he's paced himself for the long journey here. He that he's burned himself out before and he doesn't want it to happen again. However, I saw him in Game Three. He was really winded. I uh, I saw him cramp up in the finals last year, like almost like he's breaking down. He and cramped I don't... up when it was 90 degrees in the arena. <laughs> All right. Okay. I mean, I'm just referencing Game Three. Then fine. Game they Three. They literally smoked Miami out of the arena last year. They did. <laughs> literally and figuratively, they smoked Miami out of the arena. That's a San Antonio smoke signal. Is what we call that. San Antonio smoke yeah. sign. Um, no, but I, I just wonder that it, I, I hope that LeBron has enough left in his tank because you know you saw I people. Think he has plenty left in his tank, and I think he'll be fine when he goes to turn it on. Well, I just want to sweep the series and move on. Instead, I'm like, I'm behind a game, and I'm not necessarily worried, but I don't want to be – I remember how those Orlando series ended, the, the, the Boston this is Celtic this is series. Different, though. Don't forget, when LeBron shut down last time, they would be completely out of the game. They'd be down by 20 points. You don't see that happening anymore to the Cavaliers, do you? No, we don't. Because you've got guys like JR, you've got guys like Kyrie, you do have guys like, you know – like Amon Shumpert that will keep your team in the games that are excellent. You know, Shumpert, Shumpert and Smith are two of the best role players in the NBA. They're both great defensive players who can shoot the basketball and create their own shots off the dribble, which is why I'm not worried. I'm not going to sit here and panic over something I can't, I have no control of. And, you know, if they were getting blown away last, if they got blown away last night by like 25 points, I'd sit here and hit the panic button because I'd say, you know what, this team just doesn't have it. But they lost on a last-second buzzer beater that Derrick Rose had no business making. And if he take, and by the way, Dunley he took six seconds to in, in, inbound the basketball. Thank level. you. I saw season. that. Six seconds. Go in and count it. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, six seconds. And, and someone seconds someone showed it on the, uh, I don't know, it was a Vine or some video I was watching on Facebook yesterday. That's a good point. Um, 
and they showed as soon as he got the ball, they clicked their stopwatch on their on their smartphone. Yeah, it was like six six and a half seconds or something, and it, it should have been a total bullshit call. Excuse my language, but it's a total bullshit call. Should have been called. I mean, any you even hear Bulls fans last night saying when they caught a break, two breaks on that play. Because one, Derrick Rose had no business making the shot. Two, he didn't even have a business even getting the ball in that shot. It should have been Cavs ball with three seconds left. And and how he shot over six foot seven Tristan Thompson and banked it. Six foot nine, Tristan. Six I'm sorry, nine. I'm screwing that up. Six foot nine. Yeah, that's ridiculous. You know, if that's what it takes to beat us, but you know, we we played really sloppy. That's 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 all they I can did, say. Like, like I said, this is how they lost. Chicago played a good game last night. That, that, that's what you got to take out of it. That's why I'm not I'm not worried, not nervous. When you have experience and you know the game as well as I do, you shouldn't be worried about this at all. There's no reason to sit here and worry about it. Yeah, I would sure like for it to swing around and become 3-2 real quick, where the elimination game's the other way. I would feel a lot more comfortable the quicker we can make that happen. But you know what? That's the beauty. We get to find out tomorrow. So, um, hey, any final thoughts as, as we wrap this up here? Any final thoughts on uh, – <laughs> I don't know if you happen to see it, but even me explaining it should be sufficient. Uh, Ed Reed – uh, probably going to the Pro Bowl, or probably going to uh, Canton in the Hall of Fame. Uh, yeah, I saw what he said about the Browns. Which Browns quarterback was your favorite? And he said all of them. Well, he said which quarterbacks were, were the toughest to play in your league. I think he said Phillip Rivers, uh, Brady, and Peyton were really tough to play up against. And then he said, my favorite, every quarterback from Cleveland. And, I, you know, if you look at his stats, he did feast on Cleveland quarterbacks. I mean, I'll well, tell you what. I, I don't think it was just- I don't think it was just Captain Lee Brandon. I mean, every quarterback we had stopped. I know. We made it real easy on him. We made it very easy for him to make his career off of just tearing us apart. Um, but do you think the culture's changed in Cleveland? Do you, th- do, you th- do you think the Cleveland Browns are moving in the right direction? I ask this all the I time. I would say it if they had a quarterback, but they still don't have a quarterback. What do you make of Johnny? All the, all the veterans are coming out saying it's like we're seeing two different people. It's night and day the difference between this kid from last year yeah, and this man. The day the kid throws a touchdown pass, you know, a legitimate one where they win a football game, I'll start believing it. Okay. No, and that's that's fair. You got you got to see it. You know, can it last? He's he's been living recklessly. You know, uh, doing wheelies on his motorcycle long enough. One of these days, you're gonna hit a bump in the road. You know, that's like Kellen Winslow. Like Kellen Winslow, literally and figuratively. Um, but no, I mean, I, I'm pulling for the kid. I like the fact that it seems like some of the, you know the Joe Thomas and maybe Joe Hayden and whatnot. Uh, anybody named Joe. Um, are coming out and saying that it looks good. So, I don't know. I, I hope the Browns are moving in the right direction. I'm just tired of being the, the butt of those jokes. And I'll tell you what, it'll go a long way if the Cavs can uh, knock off Chicago tomorrow, send it 2-2, and then back to Cleveland where we can kind of hit reset. And I think that's 3-2 Cavs, and we got two chances to knock them out. I think that's what we're looking at. I think we're going to outlast them, kind of like uh, Floyd Mayweather and Pacquiao. I think we're going to outlast them. Their best is barely going to mark us, and I think – we're going to take them down. Time will tell. I sure as hell hope I'm correct. You can't expect a sweep in every series, Brian. It just doesn't happen like that. Well, it, well, I can expect a sweep in every series. It doesn't mean that I have realistic expectations, but it does mean that I shouldn't expect a sweep in every situation. Maybe with Kevin Love. All right, maybe with Kevin Love I expected. I did pick the Cavs in five, so... I'm wrong. Uh, it'll have to either be six or seven, but I'm still picking the Cavs, and you're saying we're not worried. Uh, we shouldn't be worried, so that calms me down a little bit. So I appreciate that, Zach. Um, all right. Well, then, I'll tell you what. Let's uh, reconnect sometime after game four in Chicago, see if the Cavs can get that split, and we'll talk again more then. Sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan, Stan. All right, brother. Go Cavs and go Indians. Lord almighty, that's a ugh. I don't even want to talk about that burning – dumpster fire we'll have time to switch there after the Cavs are done with their season but Zach you take care have fun and um, I'm looking forward to our next chat hopefully with the Cavs tied up two to two so for everybody here at the TNAM radio network I appreciate all of you checking us out go to the new American media.com homepage and on the right hand side you see three things count them three <laughs> one two three what am I even talking about Anyway, the New American Media, three things. TNAM Radio, click play. That's how you listen to our shows live. We tweet them out and we send them on Facebook. You can do that on our homepage right there. Click on Twitter. We're at American underscore media underscore. And you can do a search on Facebook for The New American Media with space in between and like the page. Subscribe, youtube.com slash The New American Media. Go Cavs.
Cardale Jones is coming for you, Joakim Noah. And I think we bounce back and take game four. Take care, everybody. Peace. Hi, everybody. You're listening to Agree to Disagree with Brian Engelman. And this is John B. Wells reminding you that not only is Brian Engelman a cool guy, and not only is the new American Media.com a very cool platform, but here's a cool idea for you, too. Are you alone? Not really. Do you like dogs? Do you like cats? You do. Of course you do. Everybody does. One or the other, maybe even both. You know, there are a lot of dogs and cats that are at shelters right now, and if somebody doesn't take them home, they're going to wind up euthanized. That's a nice way of saying they're going to be killed, because there's simply not enough room. I guarantee it. The best dogs and the best cats, the best pets, come from shelters. There's something about dogs and cats. They know. They know where they are. You walk through one of them, and certainly at least one is going to look at you and go, I wish you'd take me home. I'm in hell. Please take me out of here. It'll be the best thing that you ever did for your soul. You'll feel good about it. And not only that, but you have a friend for life. It doesn't matter if you've got money, you don't have money. What well, doesn't make any difference to a dog or a cat? All they need is the sound of your voice and maybe even the stroke of your hand, and they're fine. Maybe a little food every once in a while. The sweetest sound that those pets ever hear is your voice. Think it over and adopt a cat or a dog from a local shelter today. I'm telling you, you'll be glad you did.